In today's video, I will show you how to use Puppeteer to perform web scraping slash automation. And now I will show you one example of what we can do with Puppeteer. In this example, we'll be scraping the price off of an Amazon page. And now I'll switch to my code editor and start the script. And as you can see here, the automation is taking place. And once it's done, we should now be able to see the price, the ratings, as well as the reviews. And this is just one of many examples that you can do with Puppeteer. And now I'll show you step by step of how to set up Puppeteer. The first thing you need to do is download something called Node.js, and you can download it by just going to this exact link. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description as well. Once you have it successfully downloaded, just create a new folder, and inside your folder, just open up the terminal and type in this command npm init-y. And if you look inside your folder, you should now have a package.json file. Once this file is created, the next thing we need to do is to install Puppeteer. So you can just run this command, npm uh, i puppeteer, and hit enter. And it should now be installing the Puppeteer package. And once you see this message, that means it got installed successfully. Now we can just create a new file, and you can name it whatever you'd like. But I'll just name it index.js. And if we go back to the documentation, we can just copy the first example that they have here and just paste it and hit save. Now we can run the script by just typing in node and the name of your file. In this case, mine is index.js and hit enter. And what this should do is you go to the example.com and take a screenshot. And as you can see here, it's now saved a screenshot named example.png. And if we open it, we can see that this is a screenshot of example.com. If you want to see what the browser is doing during the process, we can actually go back to the code in here. We can just pass in the option of headless and do false and hit save. Now, if we rerun the code, we should now see the browser actually open. As you can see here, it opened for a split second, took a screenshot, and then closed. While it wasn't really that useful for this specific example, it can be very useful for other examples where you actually want to see like buttons being clicked or links being pressed and things like that. For the rest of the tutorial, I will leave this option as false. That way, we can visually see what is going on in the browser. And just to quickly go over this code, here we launch Puppeteer. Here, we're opening up a new page. This is telling us what page to go to. And then this is the actual action that we're doing. In this case, we're taking a screenshot. And then at the very end, we're telling the browser to close. If we go back to documentation, there's actually a slightly different example. Instead of saving it as a screenshot of a PNG, we can actually save the screenshot as a PDF. So if we copy the code here and then go back to our text editor and just paste it. Now, if I run the script and if we give it a couple of seconds, we should now see a PDF has been created. And if we click on it, we can see that the PDF has been saved successfully. Now I'll show you the code from the demo that I did earlier in this video. So if I go back to my file, I'm just going to paste in the code. This is code that I wrote myself to be able to scrape the price, number of reviews, as well as the average review score of an Amazon item. And I'll quickly go over the code to show how I did this. The first step is just to launch Puppeteer, just and open a new page. And here I want a specific Amazon listing. Once you're on the page, you can scrape the information that you want by identifying where it is on the page by either using a class or ID selector, as you see here. Now I'll show you how I found the price on the Amazon listing page. So if I go back to my browser and just go to the actual page that I put inside the code, and I can just right click here, click on inspect. And once I do, I'll bring up this. And here, as you notice that the span has the actual price and it has a class of A off screen. And here you can see that's how I'm identifying the specific price on the Amazon page. I use the exact same process to get the number of reviews as well as the average review score. And as you see here, sometimes it's really easy. It's just a simple like class or ID selector. Whereas for the average review score, I had to be a little more specific. But once you find the exact data you're looking for, you can then store into an array just like I have here. Once it's stored in the array, you can just print it out or do whatever you want with the data that you scraped. And now I'll show you one last example where we automate the process of searching something on Google. I will just paste the code here. Now I'll just quickly go over what this code is doing. We're just starting Puppeteer, opening a new page, going to Google, typing in tests at the specific class selector, which is the Google search input box. Then we're just pressing enter on the keyboard waiting for the page to completely load, and then we're clicking on whatever is identified by this class here. I will just run the script so we can see what's going to happen visually through the browser. So as you can see here, we're going to google.com, typing in test, then we're clicking on the very first link of the Google search results, which happens to be speedtest.net. And that is the entire tutorial. Just to recap, I showed you step-by-step -step how to set up Puppeteer and various examples of browser automation slash web scraping. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.